Okay, this is a two minute video, uh, test number one. This is the divisions, Tom Clancy's the division where in the underground where there's a variety of different colors and lots of low light conditions for video encoding. We're going to be running around this complex to have a lot of different motion to see how it handles uh, different pixels changing all the time. We're gonna try and do a very similar path by just kind of keeping some consistency between the videos. And that means sort of just running around this table here. Uh, excuse the mouse being jerky. I'm kind of in a limited spot with my mouse pad at the moment. And this is encoded with 34,000 constant bitrate NVENC with the high quality preset on the main profile. The audio on both my voice track as well as the game track is recorded with uh, 320 uh, kilobits per second bitrate and it is left completely untouched. So everything about this is left completely untouched. We're just gonna upload this straight. We're recording to the MKV format, remuxing to MP4 once the recording is complete, popping it into Premiere, and then encoding it uh, to the specifications that I mentioned in the Reddit post, that is to 25 megabits per second, which is the recommended uh, maximum bitrate for 1440p content on YouTube, and it is the bitrate in which YouTube is going to roughly leave your VP9 file. So we're just going to keep running around here just a little bit. Again, trying to make a bit of consistency, lots of different movement. We can stop really quick here and just give the encoding a little bit more time just to adjust as far as like some static pixels here. C CQP should be smaller when we do this. And there's my two minutes. So let's see what the other file looks like. Okay, this is another encoding test. Uh, once again, we are in the underground in the Tom Clancy's The Division. Uh, same resolution, everything is the same. And uh, we're just gonna try to replicate roughly the same as what we did the first time. Uh, we're gonna start running around here really quick again. Uh, this is being recorded with CQP equals 10. That's what you said you were doing in a constant quality. So we're gonna be doing 10 on this. And again, we're just trying to leave roughly the same conditions. It's not going to be exactly the same uh, as the previous file, but some of the advantages that come with CQP is that it will lower your bitrate when there are more static scenes. So to get an idea of what that's like, we're also going to be doing a static scene to see the difference in quality as well as the difference in file sizes. But to remain consistent, I'm going to keep moving in this file until about the last 20 seconds, and then we'll slow down and take a look at that static image that's over there one more time. Okay, one more lap here. Yeah, I'll come back this way really quick. Just a quick little darts around here, trying to get good views of how everything works. Uh, and then so we've got a little bit more time left. I want to make sure that the time left static is consistent with the previous clip. Here we go. So this is about where we stopped before. Bit of a static image here. And this is, again, the type of thing where CQP would be an advantage since it would lower our bitrate uh, while being static. However, it would be much higher during motion scenes. Okay, this is another test recording. We're gonna be standing here in place now for one minute. Uh, and this is to also gauge the file size that we're going to have. This is a constant bitrate, 34,000, uh, encoded with the exact same settings as we had in our first initial test. Uh, I expect the file size for this one minute file to be roughly half of what the file size was for our two minute recording, as the constant bitrate leads me to believe that the file size would be consistent at, uh, per minute, uh, per second, etc., etc. So uh, under no motion conditions, let's see how the constant bitrate fares against CQP10. And again, we're leaving both clips to run for exactly one minute. And so let's test the other one. 
Okay, this is the CQP10 uh, setting. Uh, once again, same exact location. I have not moved the character. We have very similar movement in the scene, although we do have a couple of uh, random people there that are sprinting across the window there we didn't have in the initial test, so we should probably make a note of that. However, that little bit of motion is probably insignificant given the duration of the test, um, as well as the fact that CQB10 should be, in theory, if it is the most efficient way, of course, uh, should be uh, limiting how much data it's pulling in when there is no change to the pixels on the screen. There is some movement in the middle of the picture, but everything around the outside of the frame, roughly 70% eh, of the frame, I would, I would say, has basically no movement at all. So um, once again, we're going to leave this running for exactly one minute, and then we're going to take a look at the sizes of the files and compare and see whether or not it was all worth it in the end. Okay, let's talk file sizes. Uh, as you know, we started with the constant bitrate test. And so the first and third file are the constant bitrate test. The second and fourth file are the CQP tests. The first two videos were the motion test and the second two videos were the static or standing still test uh, in a practical real game scenario. So the first uh, test, of course, was the 34,000 constant bitrate moving test. We can see that the file size is just under 500 megabytes for two minutes. Uh, the same exact scenario is almost three gigabytes for two minutes with the other file. This is a substantial size difference. Uh, and if you were recording a longer session than two minutes, as I imagine you are, the losses that you're getting in hard drive space are incredibly inefficient versus these two. But we will see if the quality is any different. Uh, then we have the static files here. Uh, of course, this is the 34,000 bitrate file here and the number three slot. This is 250 megabytes in size. As I imagined, it would be roughly half of what we would get with the other test as it is a constant bitrate and it is exactly one half the duration. So uh, 250 megabytes versus 500 megabytes ish. Uh, very, very similar. Uh, likewise, for CQP, we can see that this file is only 300 megabytes in size. So with CQP, we get almost an identical sized file with CQP 10 with a static image. It is, however, slightly larger, but we will see whether or not that has any difference at all. The big difference in file size between CQP 10 and the 34,000 bitrate that I am recording at is that in any motion sequences, we could also perhaps contribute this little bit of data to the, the three individuals that ran across the frame. We could say that some of that is happening there. Uh, but with the motion scene, there is a substantial size difference. And in video games, you are absolutely not going to be standing still during your recording like this. I don't know what you're recording exactly. So there's some games like Hearthstone and things like that where there's basically no movement. And in that situation, CQP10 makes very much, very much makes sense if you'd like to. Uh, but the benefits of CQP10 are yet to be discovered at all. So let's take a look at the actual quality of the files. Uh, I'm going to do so. First, before I do so, though, I need to uh, remux these MKV files, as this is the format container in which I have recorded it to, uh, in order to be editable in Premiere CC. Uh, this will be needed to be converted to a format that I can work with, uh, in this case, uh, remuxed to an MP4. So I will do that. I cannot do that while OBS is running. So I will do that uh, off the recording and then do it again. Okay, the remux is complete. It is significant to note, however, that the second file here uh, took four times as long, or roughly four times as long, to remux as its initial first uh, counterpart here, the two motion scenes. Uh, so in addition to taking up more hard drive space, um, this particular uh, CQP10 method will also take significantly more time out of you, uh, it, both in the remux stage here, as well as I would imagine if you're encoding to the same exact bitrate as I am for YouTube in the test, um, it would take longer to render for you as well. So um, I'm going to take each one of these files completely untouched and I'm going to upload them to YouTube uh, and let YouTube render them in full or encode them in full uh, with the uh, uh, VP9 uh, encoding that it wants to do. And then you can see for yourself the difference in quality and whether or not such a workflow is actually giving you noticeable gains. Uh, it is another important thing to note that I am testing this on a very color uh, accurate monitor uh, and I do film production stuff and post production. I'm, I'm, I'm editing a feature and I'm actually going on set as a director of photography for a feature film uh, this weekend. So I'm not coming at you as someone who has no experience in this. I'm coming at you as someone who has uh, 
almost over a decade now uh, of experience working with files very similar to this. So um, let me know what you think in the comments down below uh, or on Reddit if you'd like to. And I look forward to discussing this more with you because it is a very interesting topic. And I don't want to come across as someone who is telling you that you're wrong necessarily. Um, I'm simply coming across as someone who believes differently than you and would like to demonstrate what I mean. Before we go, I think it's important to also include the export settings that I'll be doing. Uh, for this demonstration, I'm going to be using an output preset that I have for 1440p60 for Let's Plays. Uh, in this case, the output file is an episode of my Divinity Original Sin 2 co-op, uh, but the settings will be identical to what I'll be exporting the other files as. Uh, so we are looking at a basic video settings of 2560 by 1440. That's the standard uh, width and height for a 1440p, uh, aka QHD video. Uh, we're exporting at a 60 frames per second frame rate with a progressive field order with the uh, 1.0 square pixel aspect ratio as per standard. I am based in the United States, so I am using NTSC. We are going to be clicking the maximum depth for the render. Uh, we're also going to be using any standard settings that would normally apply with this type of file. That it means software encoding, main profile, level 5.1, etc. Uh, for the encoding bitrate, we're going to be doing a variable bitrate to pass with the target bitrate set at 25, the maximum bitrate set at 26.75. Now, why is the tar maximum so close to the target? Well, it's just, again, it's all about space efficiency. It's because YouTube is not going to allow my video to play any faster than this anyway. There's no point in going over that. Uh, that's that's my logic behind that. So we're going to render both of these files out. However, for you, because you want um, this, you want to demonstrate it yourself and you want to see the difference yourself. I am also going to be rendering out one of the motion scenes, uh, CQP 10. I'll be rendering it out with your 50 megabits per second bit rate that you stated that you use on, on, uh, uh, Reddit, and I'll also be jacking this thing up to like, I don't know, some ridiculous number, like 100 or something, even though it won't matter. Uh, so we'll be doing that as well. So you'll see that as a fifth link in the description of this video. And again, you can gauge yourself whether or not what you're doing is actually worth it. I will also be including in the description how much time it takes to upload each one of these and how much time it takes to encode each one of these. My encoding PC, as you can see from this demonstration here, is a uh, AMD the Ryzen Threadripper 1920X 12 core processor will be using 100% utilization throughout all of these different renders. Uh, I'll also be using uh, a little bit of uh, CUDA uh, help from my NVIDIA graphics card. So this is certainly not a slow PC. I think it's a very good test environment to gauge what the effectiveness of this is. Uh, this Threadripper is overclocked to where all cores are locked at 4 gigahertz. So uh, there we go. Let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. Bye.